we've been talking about the attributes of God, and uh, I like thinking about these things. We we want to get them from Scripture, not merely our mind, but how God has revealed Himself. One of the things that Scripture reveals about God is that He uh, is what we call impeccable. Now, that word impeccable simply means He cannot sin. We're told in the Scripture that God uh, is perfect. He is perfect in His holiness, uh, that He cannot, He's not tempted with evil, nor does He tempt any man, that He cannot sin, that He is impeccable. Now, we sort of understand that about the first person of the Trinity and the third person of the Trinity, God the Father and the Holy Spirit. We don't ever think of them as being able to sin. The question comes when Jesus comes to the world and he lays aside his divine prerogatives, does he lay aside his impeccability? In other words, was it possible for Jesus to sin? Now, here's the argument. There's There are those who say, well, of course he could sin because he had to face temptation just like Adam, just like us. And if he could not sin, then really that facing temptation was meaningless. There are those who say that. I'll tell you, I'm not in that camp. I'm firmly in the camp that says Jesus was impeccable, that he could not sin. Uh, again, because the Bible says God cannot do evil, that he cannot be tempted, and he does not tempt anybody, and he's impeccable. And I believe that Jesus, though he lays aside prerogatives of his divinity, does not lay aside those moral characteristics. And I think impeccability is one of those. So was his temptation real? The Bible says he was tempted in all points just like we are, yet without sin. He was a faithful high priest who was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So is it possible that Jesus could not sin uh, and yet he truly felt temptation? My answer to that is yes. I believe that because he took upon himself humanity, he could feel the temptation, he could experience the temptation. It was very real. There's no, It was not some kind of second-class temptation. It was nothing less than Adam experience on the Mount of Temptation. He's tempted by the devil, and the devil goes at him just like he did to Eve in the garden and on the cross, uh, really in his betrayal and his, his flagellation and his trial and his crucifixion, all of that. Satan is tempting Jesus in many ways, tempting him to do away with the will of the Father and come down from the cross. But Jesus, because... He is God. Even though he's human, I believe he could not sin. Now, all analogies break down. This one will break down, but it's the best I've got. Anytime we're talking about the infinity of God, there's nothing that really pictures it. The same thing is certainly true of his sinlessness. But I like to think of it like this. If you think of human character like uh it's like a, a say the a coat hanger wire. Uh, it is bendable, pliable. It can be bent and molded to something else. So Adam, when he was created, was created perfect and sinless. But because he was human, he could still be tempted, and he could choose to sin. He could he could fail. He could fall. He was fallible, <clears throat> excuse me, another way to say it, he was, he was peccable. He could sin. Jesus, when he came to this world, took upon himself human flesh. But did he have only human flesh? The answer to that is no. Let's picture, let's imagine the holiness and the character of God like a massive piece of steel. It is so powerful, so so strong, so huge, that there's nothing that can bend it or shape it. And let's imagine that it, it, it can't be 
it would say that it can't even be heated and nothing can affect it. That's the character, the, the impeccability of God. He can't, Satan could tempt him all he wants and God can't sin. Satan has nothing to hang that temptation on. So when Jesus comes, he has the human frailty of the coat hanger that can be bent. But it is, in a way, and to, so to speak, inside, encased uh, in that massive piece of steel that represents God's impeccability. So theoretically, you could bend the wire. The problem is you can't get at it because it's in that steel. And I believe that's the way Jesus' humanity was, that because he was fully God as well as fully man, his humanity, though it could be tempted, it could not sin. He could not fail. And why do we know this? Well, this is prophesied from the Old Testament. It's prophesied that he's going to, what we call his second coming is going to happen. And in fact, that's not going to happen if he failed in his temptation. So it was always certain that Jesus would succeed, that he would accomplish everything God sent him to do. And that includes that he would remain sinless. Jesus, like the other two persons of the Trinity, because he is God, cannot sin. He is impeccable. 